Excuse me, guys. I am so tired today. All right. So um, let's see. Motivation and communication. All right. All right. Let's go. Uh, kind of a recap. This is on, you know, day seven. I know it's uh, uh, we're on day nine, but um, kind of talking about day seven a little bit about leadership. And, and these are the uh, types of uh, leadership and management styles, autocratic, democratic, laissez-faire, um, transitional and, and transformational. Um, and then, you know, with all of that, we, we are trying to use all of these leadership style qualities to uh, then uh, be able to motivate people. Uh, hold on one second. Let me turn right here. Okay. Um, uh, so we use these um, these leadership qualities to try to help motivate your employees. Okay. So that that's kind of we why we went back a few days. Um, show this quick video. Megan and I decided to open a restaurant purely because we wanted to offer our own dining experience. We really wanted to build a rapport with each and every individual customer, making sure that they felt special. If that was portrayed through the food, an element of theatre at the table, or the way the floor staff make the customers feel welcome and special. We knew that we both had the same thoughts and the same ideas on how our restaurant should run. Whenever you are passionate about something, to be able to do it your way, exactly the way you believe it should be done, is so rewarding. Working together, opening a restaurant together, um, all the highs and lows of that as well has with, uh, undoubtedly strengthened our relationship. We've been through so much already um, and we've come out the other end. The relationship between our front and back of house is a key contributing factor to the success that we've had. It's a collaborative effort between not just the floor staff in the kitchen, but everyone involved in the day in, day out running of the restaurant. Our front of house staff know how many hours our chefs work and how dedicated they are to what they do. There's no point in them doing that if we can't then deliver that beautiful food in a way that it deserves to be presented. It's the floor staff that brings the customer the back most of the time and it's the passion and the skill in which it gets delivered to the table that can make the food feel special as well and even taste better I believe. We're well aware of our customers expectations and if we communicate mistakes don't occur and then we're able to deliver the premium experience that we aim to deliver. Expectations are a huge thing for restaurants, for any business, and we wanted to make sure that whatever people were walking through that front door, whatever their expectations of Muse was, whether it be six years ago or today, we want to make sure that they're still wowed by that experience. We promote natural progression, and that really starts from the top and works its way down. All of the staff are included, whether it be our bookkeepers to our kitchen hand, everyone is included in having a say in the restaurant, having a say in how it runs, having a say in the food. We don't micromanage. We expect all of our staff to take ownership for what they do here. They all know that they are so important to us. We see them as family and they feel heard and when people feel like that, then they thrive. We promote for them to give their personality to the customers. They want to build their own unique rapport with that person. And they have their own personality. They're intelligent, they're food and wine savvy, they're passionate about their job. And that really helps engaging with the customers. At the end of the day, they're wonderful friends. They socialise outside of work. They know everything that's going on in each other's life. And, and they do have so much respect for each other. And uh, when you work with a team like we have, it makes you want to be better. It makes you want to be part of it. We work together for the one goal to be here for a long time and to grow together. I think restaurant managers, I think restaurant owners, 
um, should really be focusing highly on what they can do to keep people in the industry. All right. Um, Writing's not that easy, but Grammarly can help. This sentence is grammatically correct, but it's worth So I, <clears throat> you know, j just looking at, and, and, and I, and I, you know, asked you to go look at restaurants, go look at places and try to figure out what makes them successful. And, and what makes most of them successful are their employees and the management staff that, that can, can, um, can actually, you know, motivate them. Uh, motivate and, and make people want to work hard and want to do that. So uh, employee motivation is so, so important. Uh, motivating an employee, our, our motivation, our, could you read the slide for me? Yeah. Awesome. I'm good. Motivation is an employee's intrinsic enthusiasm about and drive to accomplish activities related to work. Motivation is the internal drive that causes an individual to decide to take action. An individual's motivation is influenced by biological, intellectual, social, and emotional factors. Motivation is a complex force that can also be influenced by external factors. Thank you. You know, and, and like in that video was saying, you know, just with, with, with the owners taking, give, giving, giving their uh, employees ownership in a way and, uh, and giving them, you know, the ability to, to, to kind of let them kind of, let the employees kind of make some of those choices and all of that, that also gives ownership and, and, the employee uh, feeling of, of that, you know, I respect you, that I care for you, that I want, want you to succeed, all of those things, that, that in turn gives the uh, in employee motivation, you know, because I, I'm, you know, supporting that, that, that person, um, you know, with, with all of, you know, the, with every ounce of my being in a way of, of I'm supporting this person, you know, in, in this, and I'm not going to, you know, stifle my employees, um, you know, because motivation is probably, uh, you know, is something that you need to make sure your employees have, because if they're not motivated to do anything, then, you know, it, it is, very tough to get work done uh, with a non-motivated employee uh, or uh, and, and then what happens is then you have you know people that are are not not motivated and that's going to rub off on other people uh, do you mind reading this one as well yes Every individual person has different motivations for working at a job. The reasons for working are as individual as the person. People work because the workplace provides something that you need from work. That some, the something that you obtain from your work impacts your moral, your motivation, and the quality of life. Thank you. Um, the, you know, these things, these somethings uh, do, uh, you know, affect affect people and and so you've just got to be very careful with that um some people work uh for the love of work right you know there are people that just love what they do right so that is that is uh, a personal fulfillment other people um you know have goals that they meet or want to meet uh, and they achieve it, and they see the vision, and they, uh, 
try to reach that 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 goal. Some other people have missions uh, that that they want to accomplish uh, through through work. So that there are multiple motivations, and in in there are multiple ways. And, and there are some motivate uh, some employees that I can't motivate them to do anything because it's all internal. It, it's their passion, their their goal, their whatever else. And sometimes I can't motivate them in, in, in those kinds of ways, but I can do other motivations. Uh, uh, others truly love what they do. I, I mean, have you seen anybody that really truly loves what they do? And in, in a lot of this industry is like that, you know, because People love what, what they're doing. They love the craft. They, they love the excitement of it, uh, whatever else. But, uh, oh, goodness, I apologize. Uh, some, um, you know, so, so you need to, that love uh, of, of, of it is so important. That is part of that motivation. Um, uh, it's, you know, some workers, you know, you know, and, and, and again, I, I'm, we're going to kind of be repeating ourselves over and over on these slides a little bit, but, uh, but, you know, motivation is kind of something sometimes is more within. Do y'all, do y'all, uh, do y'all agree with that? Motivation could be something that something I can't give you. Um, you know, sometimes it's it's something from within. Um, you know, I can give you tangible things, tangible like money, uh, vacation, extra day off. Um, you know, some sort of you know tangible item. Um, but other than that, I, I can't give you, I can't make you love what you do, right? Does that make sense? Uh, so I can't, I can't do that. I, I can't, um, I can't make you uh, have, you know, goals, you know, I mean, I can set goals for you, right? I can set a goal and say, I want you to meet these goals. And if you meet these goals, you could get a raise, you could get whatever else, but I'm setting these goals for you. And in this uh, is more self, or they're talking about more self-motivated on this slide, but uh, these are the things, some, sometimes there are things that I can't, I can't do to motivate you. I mean, there are, I, I have had what I consider unmotivated people, things that, and I have, I have tried to give them money. I've tried to give them, you know, many different things, but uh, to help motivate, motivate that individual. But the issue is, is with that motivation, um, you know, or with me doing that, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, motivate them. Uh, so uh, some, sometimes it's in, in or inside your body, in, in, inside you, that, um, you know, you are a mo you're more motivated than other individuals. Um, and, and uh, you know, obviously, you know, money is a huge motivator, right? Uh, or should be, you know, I mean, uh, you know, anything that, uh, you know, that could help, that could kind of, that carrot on the stick, what, what can I do to, to get you excited uh, to do your job, right? And, and that, that's kind of the, the, the weird thing is we've got to get people excited uh, and, and we want people motivated to do their job. And when they don't, when they're not motivated to do the job, they typically uh, do do uh, not such good work uh, tend you know, tend to be, but um, you know. Uh, let's see. Do, do you want to read this slide for me? Yes. 
Whatever your personal reasons for working, the bottom line, however, is that almost everyone works for money. Whatever you call it, compensation, salary, bonuses, or benefits, money pays the bills. Money provides housing, gives children clothing and food, sends teens to college, and allows leisure activities, and eventually, retirement. Unless you are independently wealthy, you need to work to collect the paycheck. Amen, right? Um, and, you know, the, the, the one thing is, is the almighty dollar, man. That, that is a huge motivator. But again, sometimes your business doesn't have extra money to throw around in a, in a way uh, to try to uh, make your employees motivated. Uh, but, you know, I, I set, try to set goals for my employees. And in and, and, and that is, I think, the, mo the most important thing is, is trying to set goals, trying to get your employees to be more goal oriented uh, and, and so where, uh, you know, it, it, it's that they're looking for that goal uh, and, and yeah, maybe it's that extra money, but also it's a promotion or what, whatever else and helps motivate them a lot more. Um, if you... All right, um, yeah, could you read this slide as well? If you don't mind, or in, if you get tired, I, I will I will do it. But, uh, it's fine. I'll do it. Thanks. It may not be their sig most significant motivator or even the motivational factor they first mentioned in the conversation, but earning a living is a factor in any discussion about employee motivation. To underplay the importance of money and benefits as motivation for people who work is a mistake. It is. Uh, and, and you've just got to... I mean, m money is a huge motivator. So you, you've got to, uh, in, in let's say, for example, uh, you get a job and, and you feel underpaid. Um, what, what, what kind of motivation do you think you would, you would, you know, would you have motivation or would you not feel motivated if you feel underpaid? Would you be motivated or not motivated? Probably not motivated uh, because you're you're uh, you're feeling underpaid, so you're not going to be wanting to do as much stuff uh, for the boss or for the company or for whatever the, the group that you're working for. Uh, fair benefits and pay are the uh, cornerstone of successful company. Yeah, uh, benefit. Being fair, you know, fair and having benefits and, and pay are, uh, you know, for sure, uh, a living wage, uh, making sure you provide a, 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 a living wage for your employees, right? You, you can't be under underpaying them, right? If you're if you feel like you're not getting a living wage or, or you're not getting you're not getting what you deserve or what you feel like you deserve. Um, and sometimes I honestly, and I said this before, I think every single person feels underpaid uh, no matter what, except if you're like, uh, you know, uh, you know, someone that's making millions of dollars or whatever else, but you know, I mean, in, in, in the restaurant industry, you know, um, you know, you, 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 you need to make sure that you pay them, pay, pay your workers a living wage and, and make it fair. Uh, and and on, honestly, realistically, you probably wouldn't have many, uh, many employees if you're, if you're not uh, providing a living wage because there is, uh, I mean, but again, you know, I, I don't, I think wait staff you know, doesn't make a living wage uh, or a, a, it, it can be very difficult, especially right now uh, during COVID time. Uh, but making sure it's fair living wage, make sure, you know, um, you know, the, the best people are in the, uh, are getting paid the, the, the higher amount, you know, I mean, because 
it, it, the people that are, you know, when I say best people, I, I guess uh, better people are the more motivated, the people that get to more, the most work done. Um, because if, if they feel like they're underpaid and they're, they're having to tow that ship in a way or, or uh, you know, uh, manage it all, um, and, and they're getting paid uh, less than uh, someone that is not doing that, um, then, then the, the, you know, again, life is not fair, you know, and, and we all know that, uh, but it, it, at least uh, knowing that, you know, you're, you're compensated properly, uh, and, and that is a good motivator, just compensation in, in itself. Um, you know, here are some other things that help uh, in, in make people motivated, uh, dental, vision, uh, life, uh, life insurance, uh, paid time off, sick days, retirement, um, you know, here, here are these, you know, uh, things, uh, bonuses, uh, perks, uh, you know, I mean, I, I've heard of companies saying, hey, we've got uh, season tickets to the UT football game or to, you know, I mean, uh, to the Houston Texans or whatever else. If you, if you um, I don't know, uh, do something good, you know, I'll, you can get into their, uh, their box seats or, um, you know, here's tickets to the theater or whatever, whatever else, uh, you know, things that help motivate people so they will keep doing that good of a job or keep doing what they're supposed to be doing. You know, retirement plans, all of that sort of stuff is, is something. Uh, what in, inspires motivation? Uh, can, can you read these bullet points that um, inspire motivation? Yeah. Thank you. What inspire motivation? Management and leadership actions that empower employees. Transparent and regular communication about factors important to employees. Treating employees with respect. Involving employees in decisions about their work and job. Minimizing the number of rules and policies in an environment that demonstrate trust for employees and treats employees like adults. Providing regular employee recognition, feedback, and coaching from Managers and leaders, above industry average benefits and compensation, managing employees within a doable framework of goals, measure, measurements, and clear expectation. Thank you. Okay, so, uh, well, I, I'm going to just kind of pick some of these out, you know, treating employees with respect. Duh, right? Um, or I say duh, but, um, you know, the, the answer is, is, or the, the issue is, is some, some people don't do that, right? Who has been at a job that have seen an employee treat their uh, employee or treat a manager, treat their employees with disrespect? I, I've seen it. Um, it. It's disheartening. It, it's sad um, because that manager is not, not inspiring in motivating, they are destroying and in uh, in 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 going to do the opposite of what 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 they're supposed to be doing, and that's motivate or uh, being a leader. Uh, leaders don't tear down and destroy. Leaders uh, help uh, motivate and give respect and and in and, and try to make you more successful than you really are. That's what a leader and a motivator does. They don't, they don't stifle you. They don't uh, try to, um, you know, treat you with disrespect or destroy, you know, your, 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 your well-being in a, in a way uh, or uh, your uh, internal uh, uh, respect of yourself or you're, you're just, you know, it's, it's very destructive. Uh, so I would never do that. Um, you know, involve your employees in decisions of, about the work and the job. Guys, 
if I'm the if I'm the head chef, right? If I'm the executive chef, am I working the grill station? Am I working the grill station? No, I'm not. I got an employee to do that, right? So that employee knows more about that grill station than probably I do. I I know. I know, you know, I mean, I, I've worked that grill station maybe before, or maybe I haven't ever worked that grill station before. But the issue is, is that's their job, right? They know their job, right? So if, if I, I want to ha in, in involve the employee in decision making about that position, right? About that job, about their job. Tell, you know, if I say, well, you know, this is what I see wrong with it. Well, maybe ask and say, what, what do you see wrong with this? You know, what, what is wrong? Why aren't you doing, or what is it? Uh, or, you know, give them the power to fix those issues or whatever else that motivates them and says, hey, Cl Cliff thinks, excuse me, Cliff respects me enough or Cliff understands that I do this job, so uh, you know he let he is letting me make the, all those decisions about my position or about how I want to set up a um, uh, the station. Kind of like uh, that video we saw about tearing the tape. Uh, you know uh, that employee decided to make those decisions. Hey, I'm gonna not tear the tape anymore. I'm gonna cut it, or I'm gonna. Um, not use a cutting board anymore or what, whatever else, uh, you know, type of deal. So it, it's those things that uh, making sure you, you get your employees feedback and, um, you know, on, you know, you know, their position. So where you're not, you're not like that video said just, just now we're, we're not in the, in the, micromanaging uh, and sometimes micromanagement uh, stifles uh, motivation um, because if you're micromanaged uh, what kind of motivation do you have to get it done you know you're just going to have them breathing down your neck or whatever else so if I give you the freedom a little bit to make those decisions I think that's so important uh, feedback and coaching uh, from managers and leaders yeah guys uh, no matter what, you are a leader. When you're a manager, you are a leader. I, I cannot stress that. You're not a follower anymore. You you're, don't follow. You're leading the pack. When you're, when you're a manager, you're leading the pack, and you're trying to coach and manage uh, your, your, you know, your ind the individuals and try to coach them so they can manage themselves, they can lead themselves a little bit because a good manager helps coach and, 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 you know, bring those employees up to that higher standards. Um, and if you don't have a, a leader or a, uh, or a coach or some manager that's a good coach or a leader, you know, you're a, they're not learning much either. You know, they're, I'm not coaching them. I'm not, uh, you know, training them uh, the way I want to be, uh, want, the way we want them to become leaders. And so where, once it gets to that point, they can fall right into that management role or fall into that leadership role. Because really you're one person as an executive chef or whatever else, the manager, well, if, if I can make my employees leaders and, 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 and also leaders in, in that position, I think that's uh, amazing. And that helps motivate them because then they can, they can move to a different position. They're not stuck in one position. Uh, so if they're motivated enough, they will uh, get there, but you also need coaching. You need feedback. You, you know, your employees need that feedback and that talking uh, that you do uh, that, that will give them that motivation. Um, obtain the growth and development in the motivation. Uh, it includes education and training, career path, 
uh, team, uh, you know, cross training, uh, success, or uh, I, I think education and training is so important. You know, uh, training um, someone, you know, to do the next position higher, uh, you know, uh, educating, uh, getting them to better themselves, right? You know, go get this certification, go get that certification, whatever else, but uh, developing, uh, you know, that education and training, um, you know, cross training. Guys, I, I think cross training is so, so important, um, you know, because A, if, if someone's not there, uh, you know, this the person, if someone's sick, I can bring someone from uh, a, a lower position up to a higher position, uh, you know, fairly quickly if, if I do cross training, right? Because if someone, you know, and that helps me uh, as well, because I'm not having to scramble and try to find someone to do the job if someone's out sick or whatever else. And with, with the cross training, if someone is out sick, usually the station's all kind of in disarray. There's all sorts of problems. Everybody's uh, trying, you know, in, in, if you cross train there, it's, it's going to be more seamless and there's going to be less, less issues and less issues will make sure that people are going to be stay, are going to be stay motivated a little bit more. Um, field trips uh, to successful workplaces. And, and I know we can't do field trips or anything like that right now, but that's why these videos are so important for me to show you uh, what, what is successful restaurant? What, what I mean, that, that husband and wife team, I mean, they, they did it right where they wanted, because I, I, I have worked, I don't know if I've ever worked at a place where the front front, the front staff and the back of the staff is always like happy. There's usually always some inner fighting with front of the house and back of the house and all of that sort of stuff. And uh, and uh, to have a have a a company or those in two individuals, like I was in the video, uh, so where the wait staff understands what what the kitchen staff goes through because it is so different. You know, wait staff comes in later. They don't know what we do. They don't know all the ins and outs of exactly what the kitchen staff does. Nor do they the wait staff under uh, the kitchen staff understands what the wait staff does. So I think uh, field trips on being uh, seeing successful restaurants or seeing you know, uh, bringing in somebody to talk about their successful restaurants, because sometimes it, it's like my kids, uh, in, in, um, uh, like sometimes it's, uh, better for someone else to say something to my kids than me to say something, because I'm the parent, I'm the, always the one that's always, you know, saying this, 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 right, but if you have, like, I don't know, let, let me use my brother uh, as an example. If I have my brother saying something to my kids, maybe that they might listen to them a little bit more than me because I'm the parent, right? Because as the parent, they, they, I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes always wrong because, you know, whatever else. But the, the issue is, is I think uh, making sure that, you know, you get the, your staff sees what a, successful business and how a successful business is run, I think is very important because it, because that will help you uh, kind of move in that direction. Um, leadership is a key to motivation. Yeah, for sure. Leadership, uh, being a leader, um, you know, you know, you need a leader gives direction, they give strength, they give communication, they give goals, they give vision, they give solutions, they give all, all of the guidance, they give all of these things. That's what a leader does. And, and, and unfortunately, sometimes 
we, we move people up the ladder, right? You know, up the ladder, go, you're, you're now a leader. Well, uh, but does a, but do all those leaders have these qualities? Probably not, okay? What you need to do is you need to train your leaders and you need to uh, give them the goal or give them all of that stuff to, so where they can become leaders. Um, how to organ excuse me can you read this for me yes thank you how organizations story destroy motivation stop treating employees like children employees are adults with lives they largely manage families investments day-to-day -day living and everything that a life entail it seems silly to fail to recognize this at work why do you, why do so many organizations act as if they need to tell adult employees what to do and micromanage every, their every action? Yeah, um, thank you. Um, have you ever, has anybody ever felt this way? Like, why, why are they treating me like a kid? Has anybody ever, uh, I mean, I, I've had that, right? They, they like are try. I don't know, I, and it's usually a, a new manager or some, you know, or even maybe even before that, but they're treating you like your kid, uh, like you're a, a child, uh, you know, and, and, and that is not the way to get your employees to, you know, be motivated, right? You know, I mean, no one likes to be treated like a kid. No one likes to be talked down to, right? Uh, no one likes to feel like they they don't trust you or they don't believe you or whatever else. So uh, that is uh, stop treating people like kids. That that is the most important thing um, that that I could ever say. Stop making rules for me uh, for the many uh, because of the behavior uh, or are actually, you know what, let's see, it's almost 7.50. Oh, let's take a 10 minute break and then we'll come back. All right, let's, uh, are actually, y'all want 10 or 15? Let's do, ten, let's do 10 and then we'll come back and I'll give it another, uh, another extra break uh, in between. All right, let's come back at uh, eight o'clock. Heard, Jeff. Cool. I do that. Cool, cool. I'll be back.
All right, it is eight o'clock. So I'm gonna get back started. All right, so, um, you know, basically companies or a lot of companies uh, will make rules because of just, uh, you know, for everybody, but it's only for a certain few people. For example, let, let's say, um, and, and this happens to, th this kind of happens at our, uh, like at school, uh, for example, like I, you know, um, what, what will happen is, is okay. So uh, uh, like when we're in the cleaning, getting ready, and this is before COVID, okay, uh, because you had a little more freedom, you could walk around more during classes and all of that uh, in at the school. But, uh, you know, during cleanup time, um, you know, I, 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 you know, you know, usually I don't, I don't say anything at the first and I let the students start to clean up, but I usually have one or two students that will go to the restroom or hide out and, you know, because they don't want to clean or they'll go do something. So I sometimes have to make a rule of no one goes anywhere, uh, you know, dur during cleanup just because of these certain few people. Well, that pisses off the masses, right? It, everybody's mad just because, well, I, I don't, you, I, I tell everybody you can't go to the bathroom during cleanup, we're cleaning up and that's everybody type of deal instead of having those one or two people that, you know, fly away and, and instead of punishing those, I kind of, uh, we, we sometimes will punish the whole group, right? And that's not the best way of doing it, right? Because of, you know, did the whole group do that? No. Um, are we trying to uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe we're probably, we're, we're, we're not maybe wanting to say it to that person or, or maybe uh, we just want to make a, a point. I, I don't know, but some, sometimes uh, when I see chefs doing that, instead of uh, dealing with the problem, uh, creating a rule uh, for one or two, because of these one or two people that kind of screwed everything up. Uh, has anybody ever, you know, had that, you know, where one or two people screw everything up for everybody else? Um, so where then, uh, then we tack on rules or regulations or, or whatever else, or we yell at the whole class and the, or the, the whole, or we get mad at the whole entire uh, faculty or I'm sorry, uh, your employees instead or my employees instead of getting mad at one or two of the individuals and and some of the sometimes those managers when they do that, they, they're just, you know, a they don't want to confront that person. And sometimes it's easier to to yell at the group instead of confronting one individual right uh, so it, it's uh, I think sometimes a little easier for them. So, uh, and it's obviously less, um, uh, could be less volatile because you're, you're, you're looking, you're, you're just going and making this rule, but instead of fixing uh, or dealing with the behaviors, right? Uh, the behaviors of, of these individuals. And, 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 I, and I want you to, <clears throat> call it what it is, it's, it's the behavior of those individuals. Uh, and and if, those, if the behaviors of those individuals weren't like that, we wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have to make those rules. Well, you know, maybe we need to focus in on those individuals, not uh, throwing a bunch of roadblocks in front of my employees that are not having those issues or not having those problems. Uh, that stifles motivation for sure, because of, uh, you know, <clears throat> if someone starts to make rules on me that I've never even done this and, and all of this, and they're tacking on all of these things, and I'm like, what the hell, why, why are they doing this? Well, you know, why, why are they being an asshole? Why are they, you know, why are they doing those things? You know, I mean, that's not a, a, a good, a 
a good way of, of managing. Uh, and, 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 and for sure, it is not the good way of motivation. And, and unfortunately, guys, we've talked about management, like all the uh, management styles, right? And how to deal with that. Well, that, you know, management and motivation and leadership, all of those are kind of all kind of intertwined together, uh, unfortunately. And, and, and we have to talk uh, in, about it all. Um, <clears throat> but I think this is so important. Um, well, maybe not uh, discipline in, uh, to the masses, just discipline to the individuals. That makes it less uh, micromanaged. Uh, you will feel less micromanaged. And then you will have probably your employees will feel more motivated. Uh, so where they're not feeling like there's so many rules like these signs, right? You know, don't go here, go there, go this way, detour, you know, stop, go, you know, type, type of deal. Um, you know, it'll, it'll alleviate these, uh, these, um, this lack of motivation. Um, let's see, uh, stop forcing, or do you mind reading this one? Focusing in on the mistakes? Yes. Stop focusing on mistakes and errors, no matter how trivial. This is especially a problem at weekly meetings and during periodic performance evaluations. Managers must provide balanced feedback, but let's get real. If an employee is making mistakes most of the time, why not fire the employee? Yeah. All right. So, um, you know, and guys, and, and I'm going to be, uh, you know, I always talk about myself or about my uh, situations or any of that sort of stuff. And um, today is Thursday. Um, and every Thursday, we have a, a, a faculty meeting, uh, a, a Zoom faculty meeting every Thursday at, uh, it's at three, three o'clock or 3.15. Uh, um, and, and so we log on in, in this even before COVID, you know, we could, uh, she, she made, uh, Chef Robin made it uh, available for us to watch it on Zoom or uh, in a meeting or whatever else. So we were, uh, <clears throat> we're always in a meeting on every Thursdays. And, um, and there for a while, I, I felt like uh, they only were focusing in on all our mistakes and uh, because you know she, she you know un unfortunately we we have a weekly meeting and uh, so all the things that kind of pile up through the week right she she has our laundry list of of items that you know e either we've got a you know that 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 she needs to talk about but um, you know you've got to realize you know, and, and you gotta you gotta look at your audience, and you and you've gotta see you've got to not completely, you know, keep banging on the mistakes, right? You know, you you need you need to, you know, address the mistakes. I get it, right? But you don't need to, you know, keep beating that dead horse type of deal because it it is a huge motivator because then there then. And, and that's kind of one of those things. So eventually she kind of stopped doing that. Uh, but it was, it, it felt in, in sometimes uh, meetings feel like it's all about just a bitch and moan session about all the things that we are doing wrong uh, as the instructors or as a chef or, or whatever business you're in. And, and, and it's not a constructive, you know, you, you can, you can tell people they made mistakes, but you can tell them in a different way instead of saying this, 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 this is wrong, you, you know, focusing in all the errors. All, you know, what I always do, and, and this is when I taste your food, when, when, and y'all haven't, y'all haven't had a chef actually sit and taste your food, right? Okay, so prior to COVID, I tasted everybody's food. Right. You know, when I was when I was, you know, in in the chefs, I mean, we tasted your food. 
um, you know, every time you cook something, I tasted it. I mean, that was, that was it. I mean, that, that's, um, you know, and, you know, when I taste your food, this is how I grade you. And, and I'm going to, and, 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 and I'm honest when I tell my students, I always, no matter how bad it is, if it's the worst food in the, in the world, no matter what, I start off with a positive. I always find something positive to start off with, no matter what. Why? Why? Because I don't want to destroy you, right? I don't want to beat you down. So I always start off with a positive, put that negative in the middle, and then I end with a positive. So I, so where you're not feeling where I just destroyed you, or I broke you, or you're in tears because all you, you know that wedding cake that you made or that 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 cake that you uh you know, spent so much time on i just you know i just said right when i walk up i go damn that looks like crap that, that's the most ugliest thing i've ever seen that right there immediately right then and there you have turned off you're pissed you're frustrated you're unmotivated and you're not in, in so where if I, if I find a positive thing, then I give you a little bit of the negative, then I give you, end up with a positive, it's more constructive. And, and when you are focusing in on the negatives all of the time, it is very destructive. You cannot, you cannot always focus in on the negatives. You've got to look forward. You've got to you've got to see it, but you, you can't just, you've got to, you know, obviously, and you've got to acknowledge it, you know, acknowledgement is important and making sure your employee acknowledges that they made a mistake or whatever else, and that, you know, they're going to move on, but it, it's not, you don't need to be focused in on that because that destroys and that, that destroys motivation. Uh, and that destroys people on not wanting to do, to, to, to put themselves out there, right? Every time we do something different or new, we're putting ourselves out there, right? We're putting ourselves out there to, to, to be judged and to all of that. And, and, you, and when you do make mistakes, you don't want to be destroyed or, or uh, you know, obliv obliviated on, on mentally or physically or whatever you want to call it. But uh, you need to, you just need to make sure that they understand the errors, but without destroying them. Um, uh, stop stomping on uh, employees, uh, basically ideas. Um, you know, you, you, you don't want to destroy uh, people's ideas. It, 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 is, uh, it, it is so important to make sure that you, you, listen to uh, them, L listen to their ideas, make sure that they, um, make sure they're heard. Uh, and, and that's in general, um, you know, and I don't, let me see what shirt I have on. Oh, I had a shirt, uh, I guess that was yesterday, but uh, I had a shirt, I have a shirt that says heard on it, uh, right, right up front. And, and, that that has many meanings and meanings of I heard you are you know I I've I you know I think it's important for, to be heard and uh, in your ideas no matter if they're good or bad they they're they're an idea you wanted to bring to the table right uh, you know I mean unless it's so far fetched idea. That that you know it, it it's just a waste of my time uh, to hear it. Uh, you know uh, you know like I don't know if, if aliens would come down and cook the food, it would be so much better, right? That that's I, I don't know that that's a way you know a waste of time or whatever else. But you know the the issue is is uh, any ideas your employees are going to come to you with, you know there's something that they think is important, right? I mean, any, any person, I mean, l l let's look at this people in this classroom. If you came uh, to me with some, some idea 
and I dismissed you and, and, and I'm, I'm your boss, um, you know, that, that stifles motivation, right? You know, I mean, if you are, if you are excited about something or you think you have a good idea, um, you know, that, and then I just beat it down or tell you, you know, you're, that was a worthless idea that, that, that's stifling your motivation. That, that's not good motivation. Um, how org, uh, organizations destroy, stop telling uh, employees that they are empowered, uh, that you empower, that they're empowered to do certain things, but they're really not, um, you know, uh, you know, that you, you, that you, you know, I, I, if I go and say, hey, you are in charge of the station, whatever your, I, you know, whatever you think is best goes and then then you do it then I go back and I say uh no that sucks you know uh, you know you, you didn't do it right or what whatever else and 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 so I'm I'm going back and and I I'm giving you that power and then I'm taking it right back and saying hey you know whatever you did is stupid and dumb and I don't like it. And then you're going to, and, and with that, you're going to do it this way and you're just going to have to deal with it. Even though that maybe they, they had the uh, ultimate power to do that or what, whatever else I gave them that opportunity. I empowered them to do it. And, and then they did it wrong. And then I, and then I berate them because of, because of that. So you, you've got to be very careful. Stop uh, violating uh, employees' uh, uh, confidentiality or sharing information about individuals. Uh, for example, if if someone I don't know, if someone tells me, um, Chef, I, I can't I I can't I can't work uh, I I can't uh, work with some or I can't. Uh, let's see. I, I can't work uh, the dish station because uh, I got in a fight. I, I don't know. I can't do this because, uh, or whatever else. And, and then I start uh, talking about, hey, this person's pregnant or this person has this disease or this person, you know, spreading, uh, uh, you know, basically talking about the other employee or, or, or even talking bad about the employee. Uh, you know, belittling the employee or, or sharing uh, private information. Hey, you know that, did, you know, Jane over here, she, you know, her husband just left her or, or you know, uh, or whatever else, you know, I mean, it, it's one of those things where uh, do not, do not tell, other, you know, other people's business when, when you're man, as a manager. And I, when I worked at a job, there was uh, two, there was one lady I worked with. She was my, um, like, not, she was like second in command. Uh, and I worked at this, this job for a long time. And this lady, uh, if you told her anything personal, uh, no matter what, it was, it was told to multiple other people, and you, and and, and and no matter what, I mean, she had no confidence, uh, or I, she, or I had no confidence that she would keep my secret or keep my my personal information personal. Uh, so I I stopped uh, stopped going, uh, you know, and telling telling them, you know, some of these things that were going on that I needed for them to know and 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 just because she would tell other people uh, uh and 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 other employees uh about you know this or that or the other and and that would you know could be embarrassing it could be uh you know m many different things so you know you've got to make sure we, when your employees share information, you've got to make sure that you, you keep that to yourself as long as, or keep it away from the 
there's some, you know, th their people, you know, if it's, if it's management, it needs to talk about it, whatever else, that, that's another story. But when it comes to you spreading rumors or talking about uh, other people's business, you, that is not, uh, that totally uh, stifles uh, motivation because, I mean, how would you, why would you be motivated to do something for someone that is uh, talking about you and talking about your problems or talking about, you know, the, the, what you said in confidence, right? Um, so, you know, ma make sure you, you don't do that. Uh, uh, do you mind reading this one for me? Could someone read this one for me or this slide? Oh, I think I did. I, I think I stopped. Can anybody hear me now? Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, sorry. Um, am I sharing? No. All right, hold on. My apologies. Um, where's the share button? Hold on. Let's do this. Hold on. Hold on, sorry guys. All of a sudden my computer glitched. There we go. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, All right, so, um, you know, things out of your employees' control. Um, you know, you, you've got to make sure that, you know, like th things that are out of control, like, I don't know, let's say the, um, um, like, okay, so like, um, and, and I'm trying to get, think of a good example of, of that. Um, or does anybody have a good example? I'm drawing a blank. Um, Let's see, you can uh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, I, you can destroy. Uh, my, my apologies. I'm now talking over you. Go ahead. I'll stop talking for a second. Ooh. Okay. Um, so uh, let's say, uh, like the environment, uh, wh whatever the environment is, is. Uh, you know, I I don't want to destroy the motivation by focusing in on performance areas, um, you know, that are out of out, that are out of their control, right? Um, you know, I, I don't want to. Uh, I, I you just don't want to focus in on things that are out of their control, right? Uh, because it, it, I mean how can they control it, right? It's not in their control, right? So if it's out of their control, then there, there's nothing they can do to, uh, to control that. So then why are you getting angry or why are you working yourself up over something that is totally uh, unequivocally out of their control and then they, that, they can't, that they can't deal with whatsoever? So I, I think that's important as well. Um, because uh, m motivation is one of those things that you've got to be very careful with. Uh, let's see what this video is about. I cannot remember. The last idea is this, is your attitude is your message. Your attitude and your actions are your message. I was thinking yesterday before coming here, I said, I want Oh yeah. All right. So
So um, this kind of starts in, in, in uh, I'll, let me try to cue it up. I want my presentation to be a gift for this group. If you walk out of here a little inspired, oh, if you laughed you. a little bit, if you got a good idea, you got the gift. Our attitude is our message. It becomes our legacy. It's what we give our, cu our customers, our clients. Uh, me, I use that word, but your patients, the people that you're serving. It's a gift. Your attitude is your message. It's your brand. It's your logo. It's your culture. It's what you want it to be. It's what people know about you and what they'll remember about you. Here's what people will remember about me. Many years ago, this guy saw me at a conference and he said, hey, we'd like to have you come speak to our company. But the thing is, is they only hire really famous people, like best-selling, real best-selling, you know, not at my mom's garage sale, but uh, they, they hire really well-known people. And I have no desire to be famous at all. Uh, to me, success is how much time I get with my family and being able to barbecue without burning the house down. If you know me, that's, that's all it is. And so uh, I was all excited. And there are days that we want to put our best foot forward. And even on those days that we put our best foot forward, we're going to stumble. Having a positive attitude doesn't stop the junk from happening. It just equips you to handle it better. It gives you the mental stamina, clarity, and creativity to deal with it and to move on and to persevere. And so anyways, they hired me, and I wanted to make a good impression. So I went to Walmart, and I purchased the most expensive luggage they sell at Walmart. And I packed up for this trip. And those luggage guys who, who put the luggage on the airplane, they can be very aggressive people. And so they threw the luggage on the plane, and uh, the zipper on the luggage broke, and everything fell out. And so they tried to reassemble it, but they reassembled it with a good sense of humor. Here's what they did. They put the top of the suitcase in first, they put my clothes in second, and they took four pairs of Fruit of the Loom underwear, opened them up, <laughs> laid them out, and took clear tape and taped it up. You know what the kicker is? I only packed three pair of underwear. I don't know who that third pair or that fourth pair belonged to. I think they got it out of lost and found. But anyways, I'm trying to make a good impression for this organization that hires the best of the best. And so I, I, get, to, I get to where I'm going. I meet Tom, who's the CEO of this company. He likes to meet his speakers and stuff before the event. And we're at the baggage claim waiting for my luggage. I had no idea. Life is all about change. <laughs> I hear this eruption of laughter, and I'm attracted to laughter. And so I asked somebody, I said, hey, what's going on over there? This guy turned, somebody packed their underwear on the outside of their luggage. <laughs> oh, I got to see this. So we're watching it come around. I can see it at a distance. It's a double carousel, and we see it at a distance. We're both laughing. Tom's like, who does that? And I chime in. I'm like, oh, somebody's clearly not right. And it was such a surreal moment. Here it comes. It's coming around. I was like, oh, no. <gasps> Have you ever had a day like that? You go to put your best foot forward and you just stumble. Is that making a good impression? No. I was so embarrassed I didn't know what to do. I pulled Tom aside and very quietly to minimize the embarrassment factor, I said, that was my luggage. <laughs> Tom looks at me, he's like, did you do that on purpose? Part of my thing. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. And the whole time it's going around, I'm trying to justify to Tom that that fourth pair of underwear is not mine. Because it was different. <laughs> it 
was so different. So Tom says, Sam, you want me to grab it? I said, no, no, let's wait for people to leave. <laughs> I kid you not, nobody is leaving. <laughs> Everybody wants to see the underwear packer. <laughs> I would. And finally goes around eight, nine, ten times, and finally I was like, Tom's like, Sam, we gotta go. I was like, oh man. Our attitude is always being put to the test. Life is filled with changes, challenges, the unexpected, negative people, but how we interpret change is everything. I reached down, I grabbed it, I said, it's mine. And people started laughing, clapping, and pointing. It was very humbling. <laughs> and now I have to lift the handle and walk to the airport. That was the worst. We get out to the van and we're standing outside and we put it in the back of the van and we're just looking at it. It's so weird. And I really thought Tom was going to drive me back around and be like, you know, we're going to let you go home and start your life over again. Because this is inappropriate and unprofessional. Tom is a, a guy who believes in positivity. He believes in his people. He believes that when you treat them valuable, and, and you treat them with, that they'll make a difference, that they will. And, and Tom was about to share some of that with me. What a great leader. Leaders do that. He looked at me and he says, Sam, I got to tell you, in 20 years of hiring the best speakers on the planet, he says, the reason we hire the best is because I want my people to have the best because I believe they're the best. But he said, today, you gave me the best speech I've ever seen in 20 years. <laughs> I was like, do explain. And he said, the way you handled that, you didn't throw a temper, you didn't freak out, you weren't negative about it. He says, how you handled that was everything. And he says, speakers get up and they deliver their message through the microphone and their PowerPoint. And he says, that's great and all. And they're wonderful. But to actually see somebody live their message, he says, that is what it's about. And that's what I love. And he says, the way you lived your message today was awesome. He says, you and your weird underwear can come back any time. Uh, and that's a positive, and that's a positive message, right? L learning how to make, uh, you know, uh, things that go wrong, turn it into more of a positive. And uh, you don't want to destroy m motivation. Uh, motivation and, and positivity. Uh, are, do you mind reading this slide? Of course. Thank you. Even when they understand the importance of motivation, employers often lack the skill and knowledge to provide a work environment that fosters employee motivation. That's because too often, organizations don't pay attention to the employee relations, communication, recognition, and involvement issues that are most important to people. Thank you. And that recognition, guys, the recognition goes a long way. I cannot stress that enough. You know, recognizing people, uh, employee of the month, uh, in in uh, the the person that uh, didn't, you know, I mean, uh, you know, that came to work and clocked in, um, you know, every day, or or what I don't know, whatever whatever things that you can in uh, motivate people and in and recognize people for. You know, for doing such a good job, for uh, you know anything that makes people feel positive about themselves, uh, or uh, you know that's always a good morale booster. It makes people feel when when people feel good, their morale is good, right? You know, when you when you have uh, people that are not you know that are scared to ask questions that are you know, what, whatever else, you know, that the morale is bad. And, and when it comes to recognition, people want to feel, people want that 
recognition, no matter what, you know, I mean, um, if it's uh, just, you know, what, whatever it is, they want to feel special. They want to feel like someone recognizes them for what they have done and what their hard work is, is what they've been doing. And everybody needs that pat on the back. Everybody needs that, you know, good job, um, you know, th those things. And, and, and if you don't, if you, if you deny that to your employees, uh, the morale is, is so, it, it's more of a negative morale, a negative, everybody is not happy. And then when, when you have a couple of not happy people, that, 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 that feeds off each other, right? And that they feed off each other and then it, it gets worse and worse. Uh, let's take another uh, 10 minute break and uh, we'll come back and finish up the, the last little bit. Sound good? Yes. All right. All right. Come back. Uh, well, that's what's 10 minutes from now. I don't even know what time it is. Uh, so, yeah. You know what? Uh, yeah, let's go 10 minutes from now. That's fine. Be good. All right. I'll be right back.
communication. Uh, communication is important. Watch this little video on communication. This is the canoe that a young couple will get gloriously lost in together. What's more important in communication, what you say or how you say it? Generally, the consensus tends to lean more towards how we say things, our body language or our nonverbal behaviors, as social scientists call it. And if you look online, you'll quickly find this to be true. Most of the attention, historically and currently, has been paid towards the importance of nonverbal behavior within communication, because nonverbals supply a lot of information that isn't projected or supplied verbally. In fact, as I was looking up examples for this talk, I even came across an article titled, What TED Talk Speakers Teach Us About Presenting, and one of the things that they focus on is the power of nonverbal. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Or is it? I want to challenge that. Perhaps what we say, our verbal behaviors, are much more important than we realize. Perhaps what we say has been so much more important now than it ever has been before in history. And perhaps we've been focusing on the wrong aspect of communication for a while. But first, I want to step back and talk a little bit more about communication in general. One of the most important things about communication is having other people understand what you're saying. Establishing mutual understanding. After all, communicating can be quite difficult if no one can really understand each other, right? And so, how do people actually even develop a mutual understanding for each other in the first place? Well, previously, researchers and writers have suggested that the development of common ground understanding is largely dependent on interaction partners coming to use the same words in essentially the same way. However, researchers have, weren't able to test this empirically in order to determine if it's true or not, because there hadn't been anything that could measure what they wanted to measure, which was the extent to which interaction partners use the same words in essentially the same way. Fortunately, though, in recent decades, a new measure called latent semantic similarity, or LSS as they will be referring to it as, uh, was proposed to be such measure. And so what exactly is LSS? So LSS is a measure that is assessed by using a program called latent semantic analysis, which is an automated statistical method that establishes the contextual meaning of any text by analyzing the relationship among the words that are used. In other words, the LSS measure determines how similar two blocks of text or two groups of words are to each other based on the words that are used and how those words are used in relation to other words. So for example, if I'm talking to one of my friends about our weekend plans, the LSS measure would first take all the words that I say, compare it against all the words that my friend says, and determine the amount of shared meaning that exists between us within our conversation. And so as someone who studies social psychology and someone who is especially interested in how people come to understand each other, especially the processes and the behaviors that underlie it, my colleagues and I decided to test this measure in order to determine if it can actually be a legitimate measure of how much people understand each other. And so in our very first study, which has been published in the Journal of Language and Social Psychology, we analyzed a sample of uh, videotaped recordings. And in these recordings were the initial, or a series of initial interactions between pairs of strangers who had just met for the very first time. 
And so they had never met before, and so they were having a conversation for the first time ever with each other. And so we analyzed this, and we also analyzed and measured a wide variety of nonverbal and verbal behaviors that occurred within these interactions. And we found that the LSS measure was indeed a legitimate measure of how much people understood each other. So now we have something that can empirically measure this. Great. So next, we wanted to determine the behaviors that would significantly predict high levels of mutual understanding. In other words, what were the behaviors that were most important when you are communicating with someone and you want to establish common ground understanding. And so in our second study, we again analyzed a, uh, two completely separate uh, samples of initial interactions that occurred between pairs of strangers again. And then we also analyzed a, a wide variety of verbal and nonverbal behaviors. And we found that the only behavior that consistently predicted how much people understood each other were their verbal behaviors. How, the amount of talking that they engaged in and how, much, how many questions they asked each other. All of the other behaviors, like gestures or smiling, laughing, gazes, uh, nonverbal acknowledgments, all of these nonverbal behaviors were not essential for the development of common ground understanding. Now, that doesn't mean that nonverbal behaviors are not important in communication. They are important when it comes to creating an emotionally pleasant and involving interaction. But they're not important when it comes to developing mutual understanding with each other. And what is important is what we say, the words that we use. And so the, the science behind this is only one reason why I argue that we should be really focusing more on what we say rather than how we say it. The second reason, and perhaps a more important reason, is the internet. The internet has drastically changed how we communicate with each other on a daily basis, and it has done so in a very, very short amount of time. As most of you will probably remember, the internet became publicly available in the 1990s. And up until then, people primarily communicated either in person, over the telephone, or sent letters, to name a few. Today, how do we primarily communicate? We send each other emails. We send each other text messages. We send each other instant messages. We comment on each other's Facebook statuses. We tweet. If you're on an online dating website, which is becomingly, becoming increasingly popular, and if you see someone that you're interested in, what do you do? You send them a message. We engage in this form of communication so much every day, and it has literally allowed us to communicate with anybody on the planet at the touch of our fingertips whether or not that person is halfway across the world or if that person is right next to us. The internet and the technological advances that have resulted from it have made communication so much easier and has changed the face of communication just in general. And the resulting different types of communication all have one thing in common. They're all primarily text-based. They consist solely upon the words that we use, our verbal behaviors. No one is going to know whether or not you had shifty eyes or that you were nervously twiddling your thumbs whenever you send a text message or an email or an instant message. Our body language, our nonverbals, don't really matter in this type of communication that dominates our everyday lives. And yet, we continue to focus on it. And again, I don't believe that nonverbal behaviors are not important. They are. But if we are to live in a society 
where we primarily engage in this type of communication, where this type of communication is so largely intertwined with our sense of self, our well-being, and our livelihood, we should adapt accordingly. And we should begin to place more importance on the behavior that we engage in the most and, have, and that has the most influence, the words that we use. We should be focusing more on what we say rather than how we say it. Thank you very much. All right. Um, now, what I want you to get out of this video, is, and let me stop sharing this. Okay. Um, what I want you to get out of this video is, is, is that, you know, yes, we do have verbal, you know, I mean, nonverbal, um, you know, stances. Like if I'm, and I'm going to move my screen down a little bit so you can see my arms. If I'm holding my arms like this, right, you know, and I'm staring at you, giving you the stink eye, what, what do you think I'm going to, I, my attitude is? I'm pissed, I'm frustrated, I'm angry, whatever, right? Uh, now, the problem with text messages and instant messages and all of that and that and this is something that um that we're you know the industry is getting better about because uh because you have to follow the technology and you have to follow the the time and and what people are using right uh you know people use their phone a lot text messages uh is not not many phone calls it's more uh, text messages. Well, text messages can be also our emails or, or any written kind of word that is sent out to an individual. Uh, they read it how they want to read it, right? If they're, if they're in a bad mood, they're going to read it in, in a more of a negative manner, right? Or as an aggressive that, that you know, in, in, you know, um, like, like in all caps, if someone types in an email in all caps, right, uh, you know, they're like one, uh, there are people that say, why are you yelling at me, or whatever else uh, ty type of deal. Hey, guys, can you give me one second? I've got a phone call. And, and uh, just with my COVID stuff, I just want to check on it. Hold on. Um, so, um, and my apologies, uh, but um, with, with text messages, with e emails, you, the individual reads it how they want to read it. So you've got to be very careful in the way you communicate to, in, to your staff, right? Um, you know, it, it, if, if I'm, you know, like exclamation points and, you know, some people, you know, like I, I need this now with an exclamation point, right? Some people take that and go, what the hell? Why is, why, you know, and they look at it. Why is my boss like yelling at me? I want it now type of deal with that exclamation point. So you've got to be very, very careful with how you, how, how people could interpret your, your, your email in your text messages. And that's why a, a lot of times people, you know, there are, you know, arguments could happen over text messages because of, of just the, the way it was interpreted, right? The way someone can interpret your text because they don't have those other context clues, right? The, uh, they don't have the nonverbal. They don't see me, uh, you know, if I, if I said that, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, said some statement with, with, you know, that could potentially, if I have my arms crossed, you could potentially think, ooh, nonverbal skills. He's like crossed his arms. He's got the stink eye going on, uh, the RBF major, you know, he must be really pissed. Well, you're not able to di differentiate uh, in, in a written word in, in sometimes. So, 
And in whatever your attitude sometimes is during the day, the time you read it is kind of the, the, the way you could kind of interpret it. Does that make sense? So if, if you're in a pissed off mood already and you read a, uh, an email um, that, that is not clear and concise uh, where it could uh, leave some interpretation onto the individual, they, they could nine times out of 10, they're going to think the negative uh, because ev everybody has that, that fear of, 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 oh God, you know, uh, I screwed up or whatever else. And you're always going to have some of that negativity uh, feeling in, in yourself and in, in that your anxiety and your, your everything could, could create more of an issue. So you need to be very, very careful on your communications when you when you are communicating to your staff, very important. Um, and and you know and and you've got to look at the age range of your staff. And and I'm almost done, and I'm gonna uh, let y'all go in a second. But the age range of your staff, you've got to look at you know if if you have you know someone that's um, you know maybe a baby boomer like my father's age. Uh, you know, uh, you know, in the, their set 60s, 70s uh, area, age range, um, you know, or in the, uh, that, that age range, maybe they're not into instant messaging, text message, uh, may, maybe not as min, not, not as much. I'm, I'm stereotyping right now. So don't, 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 uh, don't get upset or what, whatever else I'm stereotyping, but uh, it, it's one of those things where maybe they're not so good on that technology. And then I've got, you know, uh, you know, the generation Z and, and, you know, uh, all the, what, what's the uh, millennials and all of these, you know, I mean, millennials and I mean, y'all, I mean, they have grown up with that technology, right? So that that's nothing new to them. So and that's how they communicate. And you know, I mean, I I communicate with my kids by text messages. And you know, I mean, I only person I really call on a telephone is my wife, my my mom, and my dad, and my brother. You know, more family. Everything else is done by text message for me. So, but but the issue is, is you know, knowing who how to communicate in what ways to communicate the to your employees and, and making sure that uh, if I require, uh, you know, some sort of app, like, a um, you know, what, what and hold on, I'm trying to find, let me look at the app that we use at my work, uh, Slack. Uh, my, 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 my work uses the, the Slack app, um, you know, and that the Slack is kind of a, uh, uh, kind of a social or a, kind of a, a, a messaging app or whatever else, but uh, it can, uh, it, it's more like an instant message type of deal. So, uh, you know, making sure that I train my staff that does not know how to use that uh, so where they can use it so where they're not feeling left out of the communication. Uh, and, and I have had many issues with people feeling left out because they don't know the platform, especially in this is more age range here, uh, age range uh, because of, uh, because a lot of the, you know, you know, uh, you know, Generation X, you know, uh, Gen Z, uh, even, um, you know, uh, millennials, they, they all kind of ha have the, have, have the, 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 technology savvy a little bit compared to the baby boomers where they didn't have that when when they were younger so so they're they're learning so that communication gap you've got to be, make sure that you're you're communicating to everybody because everybody needs to be communicated with so uh, on that note that is it uh, any questions problems concerns for today uh, please do not uh, forget uh, homework for Monday. That is 
um, to uh, come up with your um, with a name of your restaurant or name of your business that you're going to be creating, and then uh, you need a mission statement uh, of whatever restaurant uh, or business that you are uh, you are doing. So the, those are the things that I need by Monday. Um, and actually, is it Monday that is Monday MLK day? I think so, Chef. Okay, I think uh, tomorrow I'll, I'll I'll make sure, but I will. I think we are off on Monday, so let let me re, let me look on that. I think we are. Uh, so if, if we are, then it'll be due on Tuesday, uh, no later than Tuesday. Um, but I, I I think we are off on Monday, so um, so then it, it will be Tuesday um, uh, for that. But uh, let's see. Uh, but other than that, uh, y'all have a wonderful day. Be safe. Now, if you have missed any, any classes so far, if you have been absent for any classes, I would suggest you getting on to the, uh, maybe uh, this weekend, get onto the portal, watch, watch the class videos. Unfortunately, remember, Day two, where there was a uh, issue and it didn't. I did not record it. Uh, so day two has no recording. But other than that, uh, all the other ones have recordings. Now there's a few days that I've kind of was late on hitting record, so it got half the class. But uh, but uh, no matter what, if you watch those videos, you email me saying. Chef, I was absent on this day and I watched this video. Um, I will uh, email the registrar uh, that to give you attendance for that day and to uh, and to and I will give you a grade for that day uh, as well. So uh, you have the opportunity to uh, miss zero days, even though if you have missed a day. Um, I can go back in time and fix it. So uh, please do not uh, forget that. And with that, peace out. See y'all manana. See y'all tomorrow. Y'all have a great day. Have a wonderful you, day. Stay bye, safe. Guys. Have a good day. You bye. Well. Bye, guys. Jeff, yeah. um, would you want us to write, write like a summarized page or paper, you know, so like you know that we're not just saying we watched the video no no I, I i'm i mean i i can see i can see if it, if if who watched it oh okay uh, i or i can see that someone watched it and and if there's a zero uh on on that someone watched it you know i can here let me show you i'll i'll, I'll show you exactly what uh let me share this screen so Here's like yesterday's video right here. Uh, and there's zero views. So I can I can tell if who who viewed it or at least if someone viewed it or not. Yes, Does that sir. make sense? So yes, uh, so I, I, I'm okay. And and plus I, I'm gonna trust you, uh, trust people if if they if they tell me, I, I'm gonna just trust them. Yes, sir. But uh, other than that, man, have a great day um, and uh, uh, be safe. Yeah, likewise. All right, talk to you later. Bye.